I believe that the driving force of prosperity and stability in the 21st century will be connectivity. I believe that there are 8 billion people in the world and only a fraction of them are fully connected in terms of their access to transportation, energy and communications, infrastructures that allow them to be mobile at an efficient cost, to work in uh, the global labor market and actually earn income uh, across the world. Uh, to really have adequate education and healthcare and the basics that are afforded by good quality infrastructure. World consumption as it is today, instead of being driven by the top 10% or the top 20%, will really involve the majority of the world population. If we invest in connectivity, we are definitely investing in long-term inclusive growth. The sectors that are the drivers of employment and also growth in the world economy are not just individual things like construction, like tourism, hospitality, finance, and logistics, and so forth. It's also a lot of those things in combination. E-commerce is, of course, the merger, if you will, of financial payments and logistics. It's very true that technological automation is replacing many different jobs in an ever-growing list of sectors of the economy. Even high financial jobs are being automated away. What we have to remember, though, is that the largest engines of job creation are non-tradable services. That means construction, that means hospitality, that means healthcare, that means education. I hope that artificial intelligence will play a very strong role in reinforcing and in helping to shape the decisions of democratic populations and of governments around the world. The more we move back from fact-free conversations towards a world of rationality and fact-based, evidence-based analysis, the better. And what we can see already is that some tools like IBM's Watson, for example, are able to show the various sides of an issue in order to let people deliberate on the basis of a common understanding of the facts. That's a very important step. My belief is that the ideal government of the future combines direct democracy, the voice of the people, in a very issue-specific way through initiatives and referenda on what to do about education and healthcare, tax policy, gun control, and so on and so on. Marry that with the data that tells us what the consequences will be of certain decisions, to use scenarios better. So marrying what I call democracy and technocracy will give rise to what I call a direct technocracy, and that is the best government for the future. And for that, there's a very important role for the people. For example, I think mandatory voting should be really uh, enforced around the world, but also an important role for, for data.